Good morning children. I am Darpan sir from Sanskriti school. Today we are going to discuss a poem from your English reader. The title of which is Today I wrote this poem by Ken Nesbitt. We all write or have written poems sometime in our life. It makes us feel elated. We get a sense of achievement when we take a small topic for example a flower we start to weave flamboyant words around it or even add colors to it we sometimes compare the flower to something else the other times we give human characteristics to it and while we are doing so we unknowingly dive into the world of figurative language what is a figurative language children figurative language is like taking an ordinary statement and dressing it up with beautiful comparisons expressions and taking the readers to a whole new world of imagination where anything is possible the sun could be as cold as ice and even your dog can give you advice please do refer to the ppt sent on figures of speech for a better understanding okay now in this poem a child has tried to write a poem but isn't very happy about it he keeps thinking about the figures of speech and other literary devices his teacher had explained but as a child he could not use any of these in his writing he fears that his teacher will point out at the absence of a narrative and a great plot however in the end when he goes to the teacher for assessment he gets an a plus 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 the child is overwhelmed and is left encouraged and motivated let's read the poem together children today i wrote this poem by ken nesbit today i wrote this poem but i'm not sure if it's good it doesn't have the things my teacher says a poem should it doesn't share the feelings i have deep inside of me it hasn't any metaphors and not one simile it's missing any narrative alliteration too it isn't an acrostic diamante or haiku there's nothing that's personified it doesn't have a plot i am pretty sure that rhyming is the only thing it's got It sure was fun to write it and I think it's long enough it's just too bad it's missing all that great poetic stuff I put it on my teacher's desk and wow she made a fuss she handed back my poem with an A++++ beautiful isn't it children now let's understand it stanza wise Today I wrote this poem but I'm not sure if it's good it doesn't have the things my teacher says a poem should now the child has written a poem but is unsure if it's a good one because he remembers his teacher's lesson uh maybe let's say qualities of a good poem and he compares that his poem does not have a single attribute what his teacher had explained is it fine shall we move on it doesn't share the feelings i have deep inside of me it hasn't any metaphors and not one simile now the child says that he has an enormously large ocean of feelings inside him but he isn't able to put those feelings on paper quite relatable children isn't it we all have many great ideas in our mind but sometimes we just cannot express those 
the same thing has happened to this child he hasn't it sorry it hasn't any metaphor and not one simile now what's a metaphor children a metaphor is a figure of speech which compares one thing with the other mm, it may literally not make sense sometimes it's just suggested that is the two things compared are actually not the same for example my mom is a teddy bear now my mom doesn't actually become a stuffed toy but this conveys that she is cuddly and she can be hugged whenever we feel low just as we do to a teddy bear now remember one very important thing about metaphor is that we never use the words like or as when we are comparing things we only use like or as when we are talking about simile for example he is as sly as a fox or they fought like cats and dogs when we compare the two things using the words like or as it becomes a simile okay um, shall we move on it's missing any narrative alliteration too it isn't an acrostic diamante or haiku mm, now what's a narrative children narrative is how a story is told or demonstrated it is like a style used by a narrator how he intends others to interpret the story the child says that he hasn't got any style to narrate a story alliteration what is an alliteration alliteration is a literary device in which a series of words begin with the same consonant sound what are consonants letters other than the vowels are consonants we remember vowels a e i o u and what are consonants b c d f g h j k l and so on so consonants are letters other than vowels now example of alliteration she sells seashells by the seashore remember children words don't have to start with the same letter to be alliterative just the same consonant sound for example farida fled to phoenix to find her favorite footwear is an alliteration because phoenix although starts with ph it makes a fur sound all right okay it isn't an acrostic an acrostic is a poem in which the first last or any letter in each line spells out a word or a message or even a phrase for example an acrostic for cats cuddly acrobatic tenacious softly purring diamante a diamante poem is a poem that does not rhyme and has seven lines the first and last lines are the shortest one word each while the lines in the middle are longer making it look like a diamond can you see the diagram we may take the same subjects or the opposite subjects here we have taken the opposite subjects that is cat and dog the second line describes a cat that means adjective the third line is the verbs for cat the fourth line has two nouns related to a cat 
and the remaining two for a dog. And we go on using the same pattern. Alright? Okay. Haiku. A haiku is a Japanese style of writing poetry consisting of three unrhymed lines. The first line has five syllables, second line has seven, and the third line again has five syllables. What is a syllable, children? A part of word that contains a single vowel sound. For example, in the word Papa, we have two syllables. Listen to this. Papa, A and A. Pa, Pa. Another example. Water, O and A. Wa, Ta. So, in a haiku, we have five, seven and five syllables in lines one, two and three. Okay, next stanza. There's nothing that's personified. It doesn't have a plot. I'm pretty sure that rhyming is the only thing it's got. There's nothing that's personified. Children, what is a personification? Personification is a figure of speech which gives human characteristics to inanimate objects. That is, non-living objects or animals or even ideas. Personification can really affect the way the reader imagines things. For example, the cat was smiling at me. Now, a smile from an animal doesn't seem practical, does it? Although we feel that a satisfied cat, which has been fed well, can show signs of happiness. So, literally, a cat cannot smile, but a happy cat can be personified, just as humans smile when happy. So, personification is giving human qualities to non-human things. Okay, look at another example. The angry cloud moved closer. Perhaps the angry cloud was moving towards us to attack with thunder and lightning. Again, we are giving human quality to a cloud. I hope personification is clear, children. Shall we move on? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it doesn't have a plot. I'm pretty sure that rhyming is the only thing it's got. It doesn't have a plot. Mm, now, children, a plot is a literary term used to describe the events in a story. Now, we all know what a story is. Okay, It has something called introduction. Yes, that is how a story begins or how characters are introduced. Then we have action. Yes, we have action in a story. When excitement or tension is built up. And we have climax. That is a turning point in a story. So, this was about plot. I hope plot is clear. The next two lines read, I am pretty sure that rhyming is the only thing it's got. Now, the child is happy that at least he has got the rhyming correct in the poem, if nothing else. What is a rhyme, children? I know we, all, we are all experts in rhyming words. Bat, cat, sat, big, fig. A rhyme is a repetition of similar sounding words. It brings out rhythm in poems when we read them. The child is sure that he has got his rhyme in place. Okay, uh, shall we move on? It sure was fun to write it. And I think it's long enough. It's just too bad it's missing all that great poetic stuff. Mm, the child expresses that he enjoyed writing his poem and seems happy about the length. Although he again remembers that his writing lacks all great poetic stuff. Now, 
all great poetic stuff? This is a very informal way of saying that his poem lacks all figures of speech and poetic devices. Okay, uh, shall we move on? I put it on my teacher's desk and wow, she made a fuss. She handed back my poem with an A++++. Okay, so, uh, despite the lack of all the poetic devices that the child has mentioned, his teacher still gives him A++++. So, in the end, the child is appreciated for his attempt. Somewhere the teacher has also realized that it is fine not to include every figure of speech. But at least he made a nice attempt. So, children, through this poem, we learn that we must continue writing, however unrefined or imperfect our poems may be, because these continuous efforts lead us to success, and someday we shall evolve as great writers. I hope you have had a fair understanding of today's topic. Go through it once again whenever you have time. Thank you children. Stay safe.